to um, in America, where another something else in America, where you had um, you had three um, white people arguing over you know what is and is not racist and discriminatory, and it's uh, it was a TV show called Real Time. Uh, Comedian Bill Maher, um, Ben Stiller lookalike, and general dreary prick Sam Harris, uh, who's one of the atheist horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, that has a, such a different context to it. And, of course, the world's greatest actor, and uh, uh, Miss, Miss, Mr. Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck. Now, I've got to say here, I've got no... Uh, ben Affleck was just thrown into this thing. And I think it's a bit sneaky that you get Bill Maher and Sam Harris both sat there. And they're, they're basically going to... And you've got Ben Affleck, he's not... And get someone who's actually in that sort of area. You know, that's, uh, that Ben Affleck did what... I mean, he could only do well. Um, he could only do as well as he could do. But these guys... these guys, And I just love how Harris and Maher... Maher was losing his absolute shit. He was he was jumping up and down, screaming at Ben, ben, uh, ben Affleck, and for what? You know, what does Ben Affleck? Ha- ha- what can Ben Affleck do about fucking ISIS? What can any of us do about ISIS? Why is the point in getting rolled up at us? What has actually Bill Maher done? I want to know this. Bill Maher and Sam Harris are sat there saying, "Oh, bloody liberals," you know. They don't, they, you know, they just sit there and they'll make excuses. And it's like, no, we're not making excuses, but we don't live over there. What does Bill Maher's comedy show, where he does his smug little grin and then stares at the camera for 30 seconds, waiting for an applause, and if he doesn't get it, he sneers at the audience like it's their frigging fault. Sam Harris, who's just there basically, you know, as a, as a someone who claims that he's a fake liberal claiming to be a black, he's basically a neocon. And then you've got Ben Affleck, who's meant to be an actor, but, you know, we know better. But I want to go through, first off, before we get into that, I want to go through some of the things that Sam Harris... Sam Harris said, like, two lines here. And it's just... It shows how it's just insanely dishonest, willfully ignorant, and just absolutely, you know, just trying to cover his own arse here, you know. Um, first of all, I'm sure you've, if you've ever met anyone who denies that a form of bigotry exists, like they say, oh, there's no racism anymore, and whenever you say, well, what about this, this, and that, and then they go, oh, no, that's not, that's different, that's this, that, and the other, blah, okay, okay, what you, and you, you just try, and, and any time someone's accused of it, they have to defend them, they always try and make excuses for them, and, oh, there's no anti-Semitism anymore, oh, they weren't being anti-Semitic, oh, they didn't, oh, there's no homophobia anymore, no one bloody cares, you know that, that, that is the it, I mean, that's almost cast iron guarantee, that that person is going to be someone who actually, you know, they actually they actually are, um, are, are a practitioner practitioner of that bigotry. Uh, a good example would be Pat Condell claims that there's no such thing as Islamophobia, and that he doesn't practice hate speech. So he is a comedian. Who would have thought? But I want to go through Sam Harris' thing. He said Sam Harris stated, "We have been sold this meme of Islamophobia." Now, I want you to just think that for a minute. We've been sold this meme. Can, can anyone tell me when the meme of Islamophobia started? Because, for my mind, it started, or it was brought up. Yes, I, I, I will acknowledge that, like any other word, like, like racist, racist or Nazi or whatever, Stalin, you know, Keith Chegwin, they, oh, they get thrown around, around way too fucking much. Um, but that doesn't mean anything. That's not, that doesn't make... That doesn't mean that they're there to... Um, they're invented for that reason. And it doesn't even matter why the word was invented. The whole... The, the word exists. I mean, that there says to me, Sam Harris does not believe... Sam Harris does not... Sam Harris believes that there is no examples or no real sort of significant amount of people who are... who are, you know, want to discriminate and fearful and who have a, basically a very, very bigoted and uh, discriminatory and distasteful view of Muslims. Now, if you don't believe that, what is that? There's, there's nothing else Sam Harris could be other than a liar, or he's just deluding himself on this one. Now, he said, we've been sold this meme of Islamophobia, where criticism of the religion gets conflated with bigotry towards Muslims as people. Muslims as people, yeah. As opposed to Muslims as what, Sam? Okay, where criticism of the religion gets conflated... Okay, 
if someone says Islamophob- Islamophobia or accuses you of Islamophobia because you're criticising the religion in a fair and reasoned way, why is that a problem? Can't you just ignore them or tell them to fuck off? Does it matter? I mean, this happens every bloody day. This happens all the time. You get called things that are unfair and whatever. And, and, uh, and also, I'd like to point out here, Sam Harris chose his words carefully there, because I, it's interesting, Sam Harris has been called an Islamophobe for many times, but none of them, he said it was for criticisms of the religion. Now, here's some of Sam Harris's criticisms. Uh, he, has def- he defended and supported the, uh, cont- the, the continued use of Guantanamo Bay, as an, as an offshore uh, internment camp to hold people who, without trial and without evidence, uh, for as long as they wanted until they found out whether they had uh, terrorists uh, living near them once on a Tuesday. Right? Uh, he also supported all of the suspected and, uh, and, and unfairly imprisoned terrorists in Guantanamo Bay of being tortured. He actually defended torture. He wrote a, it was an article called In Defence of Torture. Um, he's also, and he also advocated... Uh, that the police and airport security and such in America um, should be allowed uh, to discriminate and single out Muslims for searches and st- for stopping the searches and target anyone who, as he put it, looks mis- Muslim. Now that's racial profiling, whether you like it or not. I know it's not a religion; it's not. It's ra- you're basing it on what they look. Right now, can someone tell me? Does that does that sound like someone who's making? Uh, he's making reasonable criticisms of a religion. Or does that sound like a guy who seems to be quite content and he's, he's very comfortable with anything that, is, uh, that involves you know, Muslims being found and, taught and treated badly and singled out and subjugated because, you know, God, good old Sam Harris, he's got, that man has suffered. I mean, you've, the, Islamophobia has made Sam Harris his life hell. Look at how much he's been held back with his hundreds of millions of dollars and his successful book career and his doctorate. I mean, it, I don't know how the poor lamb gets by. Uh, you know, none of those things are criticisms. That's why he, Sam get, Harris gets called an Islamophobe. It's got nothing to do with his... With his and, it, it, and then he goes on to say that it's, a, it's, a, it's intellectually ridiculous to use the word Islamophobe. But the problem is, he's basically saying, so if someone uses the word racism, wrong. You know, if someone says someone's a racist and they do it unfairly, does that mean all of a sudden that, other, that racism is, it doesn't exist? It's no longer a, a valid term. It, no, of course it doesn't bloody mean it. It's just ridiculous. Now, then uh, ben, St- ben, ben Stiller, fucking hell, I'm getting... Ben Stiller, Sam Harris, right? Ben, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's so terrible, I'm now confusing him with Ben Stiller, right? Ben Affleck's trying here. He's trying. He's, he's saying, "What about all these billions of Muslims who are not terrorists and extremists?" And they just stare, gawping at him. But then what happens is they then go on this tirade of the, you know, the old emergency, you know, break the glass and use these in in case of an emergency. Anti-Islamic, empty ret- rhetorical straw man, goalpost moving, proven lie, conspiratorial theories, presented by Bill Maher, a man who laughably claims to be a rational free thinker. Um, because apparently he figured out God doesn't exist, but he can't figure out that, you know, cold vaccines work, and such and such. Uh, and these, it's, these are all the ones, I mean, I call them the five pillars of Islamophobia. Islam is a religion, not a race. Well done. No one said otherwise. And, because uh, that's the silly thing about that one. It's like, uh, Islam is a religion, not a race. But, uh, it's like, you, you don't just, it says you, basically it's like you can't be racist against anyone who is Muslim then. Because you wouldn't always necessarily... If I said two men were being racially abused on the, on the train, you wouldn't jump up and say, men, being a man is not a race, it is a gender role. Now, and did you go... It, it, yes, so, li, is, this is the best one. They say Islam is a religion, not a race, and then they go, no, Islam is not a religion, it's a fascist ideology. What is it next? Islam is a fascist ideology. No, it's not. Islam is a, is a huge pandemic virus that will wipe you out it's Ebola. That's what Ebola is. It's the next stage of jihad. Um, Bill Maher tried this one. Uh, I, no, Bill Maher didn't try this one. This was the other one. Uh, Islamophobia is a made-up word. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's just stupid. Yeah, you know, it's a word that was made up for it. Because if a word doesn't evolve, you know, we have to make something up for it. The reason we had to make it up is because people were using racist, and that wasn't working. 
So we used Islamophobia, you know, and it made it worse. And then Bill Maher made this point. He said, I want to make it clear that me and Sam Harris, we don't hate, we, we hate Islam, we don't hate Muslims. And I just wanted to say, just piss off. Now, seriously, imagine you're a Muslim watching Sam Harris and all this stuff. Do you give a toss whether they cut their... I don't hate you as a Muslim. I just hate the very thing that you use to get through your life that you believe in, that informs everything about you, and that defines you as a human being inside and out. That's what I hate. I don't hate you. It's like saying I don't... I, I hate jogging, but I don't hate joggers. Well, if you take the jogging... Islam doesn't exist without, without people to be Muslims. So how can, you hate, how can you hate it and sit there and talk about how evil it is and then say, but Muslims are all right? Well, then bugger off them. It's such a... It's, a, it's the... I, I love the sinner, not the sin. No, you don't. It's, I don't buy it when a Christian tells me it. I'm not buying it. When Bill Maher fucking throws it out at me, but then, but then he went for the obvious one, and that's the one I want to get on here, which was uh, Bill Maher's uh, little rant about liberals being too soft on Islam, and the example he used of a of, of a um, of uh, basically liberals and atheists, whatever, um, not uh, basically uh, not being very. Uh, understanding or be, uh, being very nervous about uh, people who criticise Islam. Uh, the example was Ayn Hirsi Ali. Um, <laughs> Ayn Hirsi Ali, who just demonstrated, helped me realise what a bunch of drama, drama queens and melodramatic spoiled prats these are. She was being offered, she was offered an honorary degree in, by a university in uh, New Jersey or in somewhere near there, some shit hole. But she was offered an honorary degree, God knows in what. Um, she was being offered an honorary how to fit, how to falsify your entire life story to get a, get a fucking visa. That would be one. But she um, and they said they wanted her to get, give her an honorary degree in some shit, and then she was going to do a speech. Now apparently, Brandeis University students found out about this, and they weren't too happy. Um, and a lot of and they had a protest. Um, they protested that they didn't want this woman. Um, to receive an honorary degree from their university, and they would not be happy about it, about having her for it, about having her go there. And um, Brandeis University, presumably because they were they were private uh, education system, they looked at all the students and uh, not how many there were, just added up the money, and uh, and then said, uh, "We're not going to give you the honorary degree now." Um, and that's it. And they, and uh, but you, and then they said, "But you can still come and talk." And she said no and ran away. And then she went, and, and then suddenly, when word of this bro broke, the atheists were united as one at this tragedy. They were su they sat there in silence, every you know, just in tears at the fact that some that, that some woman they don't know uh, was getting a fake degree from a university they'd never heard of, and um, and now she wasn't going to be allowed to. And of course, everyone ended up spinning this as freedom of speech. It's not freedom of speech. It's a private university. They don't have to give her a platform. And then they were saying freedom of speech, but the fact is they let her talk. They said she could talk. She didn't want to. And so they all just keep spinning into it this round over and over and over again. But the thing, that, the, the thing that nobody wants to bring up here is the fact they keep saying this is pressure from the is Islam lobby. Brian Dyer's university is, at, according to its very own website, and uh, this could just be Takia, but according to Brandeis' website, if you look it up, it says, quite clear, plain as day, uh, Brandeis is a private education funded and inve with uh, investors and funded primarily with Jewish money. So I'm supposed to sit there now, so you're sitting there going, oh, this is all about Islam. No, it's about students protesting. And, of course, these people only see freedom of speech as relevant when someone they like is, is not talking. Those students... See, there's a difference here between being censored and silenced and, uh, and not, not having as many people on your side and having not as many voices. You know, if you've got one person on her CLE who has no investment in, a, in, a, in this university and then you've got 100 students whose parents are loaded, no doubt, and, uh, and they're basically saying, you know, we're not going to be happy about this. Oh, we're going to tell Daddy. Daddy will, Daddy will speak to the senator, and the senator will have you fired. Yeah, usually, and all this other stuff. Who are you going to go with? Yeah, that's why we have freedom of speech, so everyone can join in. 
the fact that you lost isn't is none is tough shit, quite frankly. But no one also wanted to talk about the fact as to why. Now, but Bill Maher's bringing this up about liberals and 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 other other such people on the left rejecting and denouncing Ayn Hirsi Ali. Yes, and they are. It's got nothing to do with the fact that she criticises Muslims. Because if you thought Sam Harris's criticisms were somewhat, I don't know, a little bit on the um, harsh side, then you need only look for Ayn Hirsi Ali at... Well, the, let's go. To, let's start at the bottom, shall we? And this was from a 2007 interview she did in uh, in Reason magazine. And um, the long and the short of it is, I'll leave a link of it below. The long and the short of it is, um, she basically said that um, uh, Islam needs to be defeated. Islam needs to be defeated right now, and uh, and just uh, just stomped out. The, you, the interviewer asked her, don't you mean defeating radical Islam? She said, no, Islam, period. Once it's defeated, it can mutate into something peaceful. What the hell does that mean? Defeat... Well, that... I don't get it, right? It makes no sense, right? It's very t- difficult to, to even talk about peace now. They are not interested in peace. Right? She says openly, this is a war with Islam which is not very helpful if you don't want to try and piss off all of the world's Muslims and make them think that it is a war with Islam. That's probably why Barack Obama said that ISIS isn't Islamic, because he wanted to sort of do something that might help out the poor three and a half million Muslims who live in America who shit themselves every time some bearded bloke with a tea cosy on his head is seen waving his severed head on Fox News. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not because he's like, you know, an idiot who doesn't think that Muslims can be violent. Maybe it's because he's a smart politician who was trying to keep the peace. But she goes on and on and on and on and on. She goes, we have to crush the world's 1.5 billion Muslims under our boot in concrete terms. That means defeat Islam. She has on multiple occasions as well said that it, they said that one thing America uh, one thing that they could do to um, bring this about is to invade the Muslim is to have literally World War Three and basically go over there and force Muslims in Muslim countries um, at the point of a gun uh, to convert to Christianity and if they don't then basically we'll shoot them. She didn't say shoot them, because that would have been really stupid, but she said, she said basically everything but, and then left a little, uh, the little sort of clue lying around there, and with her quotation marks of defeat Islam. And then she said, well, no, it's a warning, we won't accept this anymore, we are here to crush you. What does that sound like to you? That sounds to me pretty damn sinister. Uh, she's also argued... She also argued, pretty much in the same uh, interview, she argued that Muslims should be exempt from the US Constitution. So it doesn't count for them. Now this is the thing that pisses me off. This woman came over from uh, from Muslim country, Kenya, not Somalia, Kenya. She lied about that. But she came over from Muslim country, lied on her form, got into Holland, and comes out as this person claiming that she wants to, you know, help, she's a feminist, a woman's rights activist, you know, there's women oppressed in the, in all these Islamic countries and she wants to help them. Okay, so when she got involved in politics in Gert Wilder's Dutch Freedom Party, what was the first, what was her job as, as sorting out the immigration? What was her immigration policy? It was um, immigration, uh, yada yada yada, for, uh, there'll be reform, but no Islamic uh, no, no, po- nobody from any Islamic country can emigrate into Holland. No Muslims from anywhere. You're barred. So, Ayn Hirsi Ali, this woman who cares so much about about the plight of of uh, Muslim women in the in all over the Muslim world, she was so concerned that she thought the best thing to do would be to close the gates and stop them from ever coming in. In short, she implemented. Or she advocated a, an immigration policy that had it been in place when she tried to get into Holland, she would have been told to go home. Now, I'm not going to... I don't care what... what I'm, I'm ignoring her, whatever her past life may or may not have been. I don't know and I don't care. If Glenn Beck had said stuff like this, why is Bill Maher, a guy who bitches and complains about the military-industrial complex, why is he defending a woman who wants to start World War III with Islam? 
you know, and just massacre them at will if they don't convert. And who, what nutter thinks that converting an entire group of people from one religion to another is suddenly the is suddenly going to solve a problem? Killing them will certainly help solve a problem. I've got no doubt. Right? Why would you sit there and argue that? Why? How can you sit there and defend a woman who has not got a secular interest when it comes to religious freedom? Right? She hasn't. No, that's not secular. No, you think it's weird that a secular organisation are rejecting a woman who wants one religious minority to be classified as a second-class citizen? I don't really think that's that sounds right, do you? And oh God! Now, of course, she was with Gert Wilders' Freedom Fight. Now, I know a lot of people get pissed off just because I slagged off Iron Hersey early. I don't give a shit, right? I really don't give a shit. If that, I know, I understand. I understand that you you like her and she, she she's precious to you, but I don't give a shit. It's the same way you look at everyone else. You know when you're being so politically incorrect. Now let's not ignore Gert Wilders. Gert Wilders wonderful things to his racket. Like you know he wants to um, he wants to knock down all. He wants to charge women from wearing burqas, tax them. Um, he wants to uh, ban any sale of anything Islamic, anything foreign that is related to Islam in the country, knock down all of the mosques, and basically sinisterly imply that he will force Muslim uh, who have got dual nationalities out of the country. Oh, and setting up work camps called Villages of Scum, which would imprison whole families if one of them who was underage had committed three crimes. Now let's add to that. The th other two people, who Ein Hersi Ali and Gert Wilders are frequently seen around with, and they will call them Ka Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer. They are the Donny and Marie Osmond of insane, fucking, hateful bastards. Um, Pamela Geller, oh, obviously Atlas Shrugged uh, website. Um, my favourite thing about her, she has this obsession, obviously, like they do, with uh, Muslim sex gangs uh, to groom children. We know about this, and uh, we know because he cares so much about children. He always, always cares about you. Only if they're raped by a Muslim, though. It's, a, it's literally you won't hear a peep. If you're not, if if you're if you're molested by a white person, she won't give two fucking shits about it. And someone asked her once this. They said, they said, why don't you ever show any concern or interest in children who are sexually molested or this this paedophilia epidemic in the Catholic Church? Her response was. Her response was amazing. She said, because it is not, ch child molestation and child marriage are not part of Catholic doctrine, but they are part of Islamic doctrine. But his point was this, is like, but doesn't the raping of the children concern you more? And she said no. So in her eyes, it's not the fact that anyone molests a child or not. It's whether or not the book says it. Every Catholic priest could bum a child every day. And Muslims could touch nothing, and it wouldn't matter to her. Now, that, how insane is that? And I say insane or hopelessly hyperbolically. Can you? Can anyone tell me how you can get your head round that? That you don't care about something because it's not written in a book. And then you've got Robert Spencer. Robert Spencer from Jihad Watch. Um, basically, he's a Catholic reactionary bigot. My, basically, he's kind of like, he'd make Mel Gibson blush, right? But my favourite thing, uh, the one thing I'm going to say here is, uh, I'm going to finish this up quickly, but we've got Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer. They share one very interesting, uh, they share one very interesting um, character or opinion. Um, they are these two very well-respected uh, amongst certain people and, um, and influential reporters. Um, they have both been stated and still are to this day uh, proud, outspoken deniers of genocide. Now, when I say genocide, I don't mean one of the big ones, WW2 or, or Rwanda. No, they deny a much smaller one. It's, um, it's, it's pretty horrific when you read the full details of it, but it happened in the early, early mid-90s. Serbia and Bosnia's governments order, ordered the military to basically go through the entire country and massacre everyone. Kill all the Muslims. All the Muslims. Burn down the Qurans. Burn, get their families out, take the women away from the uh, men, kill the men, take the women away from the children, get them out of there, take everything they got. If you're a woman, and you, you, you didn't get thrown out of the country, if you were unlucky, you got raped. And if you were lucky, you died, because if you weren't, you got thrown out afterwards, along with your kid. And it was estimated over the course of time that there were about 10,000 plus men who were killed, and about over 50,000 others displaced and kicked out. Now, that's not obviously big, huge numbers like, you know, like the big H Holocaust, right? But this is, I can't believe this, this was, um, and st this is, 
classified by the, this was classed by the um, by the uh, UN. It's the UN, yeah. Uh, where Ratko Mladic, who was on trial for genocide, it's two counts of genocide, first offence, right? Uh, yeah, this was the biggest post-war. This is the biggest European post World War Two genocide. Right? This is the biggest genocide since World War Two in Europe. Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer have invested so much of their entire lives and their entire careers depend on them making Muslims look to be purely evil, they can never look like to be the victim, that when they heard about this, all these children and women being raped and all these men being murdered and massacred, well, they, didn't, they didn't sit there and stop and think for a second. They came up with a... They said, right, well, we're going to have to sort this out. So they decided to spin it and to say that actually... The, it wasn't the it wasn't Ratko Mladic and the Bosnia and Serbian government. It was uh, it was a, basically a, a opposing um, sect of militant Islamists who went round doing it. Now, can anyone think of another example throughout history where uh, a Holocaust, a, a genocide has happened, and people who have a, an invested hatred in the people who were genocided uh, decide to concoct a conspiracy that actually puts the onus on the victims rather? Then put the and makes the victims look like the sort of bad guys and the ones who are suspicious. And then when you add that to uh, Ein Hersi Ali's sort of global domination theocratic empire, Gert Wilders' work camps, and basically ethnic cleansing of any area uh, through throughout any with, <clears throat> and removal of anything sort of slight, vaguely foreign. When you put all these things together, what do you actually get? Because I know it's a bit obvious, and you want to say it begins with H, ends with Hitler, right? What do you, you know? I mean, these are the four. These are the four top dogs here. I've just named these four. I'm not naming all of these people. Islam is is so vast and wide. I don't have to be soft on it. But Bill Maher, Sam Harris, you liberals, can you please sit there and I want you to sit there and tell me how you can, with a straight face, laughably say that you know liberals are soft on Islam and it's you know. And they are allowing, they're allowing people to get away with this. You are sat there being soft on genocide denial, advocating a global genocide, ethnic cleansing, uh, theocratic, theocratic imperialistic empire building, internment camps, torture... And, and, and what else do you want? You know, what, <laughs> do you need anything else? You're sat there and you're, def you're, you're aligning with that and you're not saying anything. And I think that's because you're a bit of a soft bastard, but it's probably because you're, you're just too busy hating Muslims to notice who's standing next to you.